And I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. It has been an absolutely crazy busy week with Aduro Clean Technologies. It's a company that I've covered for the last couple of years, and I will continue to cover it. I just think that the opportunity uh, in uh, large markets and, and what the industry needs right now, multiple solutions, Aduro has one. Uh, albeit in my research, uh, really is at the top and on the cutting edge of uh, being able to sport a technology that can produce high yields of of uh, of of product uh, when uh, subjected to waste plastics. Furthermore, the success that they have over exposing their technology to contaminated waste plastic really sets them in a league of their own. For you guys that don't know, Aduro Clean Technologies sports a hydrochemolytic uh, technology that looks to deconstruct the molecules that have been historically very difficult to do and, and, and in the face of other solutions that uh, look to destroy the molecule through melting. Um, through pyrolysis and, and other mes the methods that require high energy input, which translates to high dollar input, uh, it's just not economically feasible. And you might say, well, that's not true. There's a recycling symbol on every package that I buy. What gives, Ryan? I think we need to step into uh, the new era of understanding that we have been lied to for many, many decades and it is not till recent where the global communities have gotten together and provided um, responsible uh, responsible producer programs and really started to put the responsibility back on producers to say, look, if you're going to produce plastic, you need to be aware of the impact to that plastic put out into the environment and the uh, results that have transpired over many, many decades is that those are not introduced back into a circular economy, rather making their way to our landfills and into our, our oceans. For the economic reasons that I've discussed, it's a sad reality. We do not recycle. Recycling is uneconomical. Uh, companies like Aduro Clean Technology and others are coming to the forefront now because we unfortunately have drug our feet on this topic for many, many decades and find ourselves in a situation now where we need to take a hard look at the impact of pollution to the environment, uh, more importantly, uh, the impact to um, human health. Uh, and the impacts of microplastics as they make our way into our drinking water uh, and, and more um, more invisible is into our food chain, making our way into the human digestive system and, and causing problems that uh, um, we're just now uh, coming accustomed to because I think everybody has been under this this umbrella of understanding that all is well in the world of, of plastic pollution, and it is not. These are put forward to you guys as a discussion. Um, I plan on doing 30 minutes on this video to discuss some of the recent highlights that Aduro has come out with. If you don't have the time to sit through 30 minutes uh, on all of my um, social media content, split it up. Subscribe to the channel so you can be privy to what I consider to be invaluable information. I've always put the emphasis and value on information. If you disagree and you believe that timing uh, is your method, no problem. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to share with you what it is that I know uh, through conduits like Aduro Clean Technologies website, aduroCleanTech.com. I'll link to their website in the description below. You can see all this information for yourself if you don't somehow like my delivery or don't like me or hell, you don't like yourself. I, I don't really care. My job is to provide you this information. At the end of this video, I'm going to disclose where my conviction lies. Um, in 2024, it has forced retail investors uh, into a little bit of corner in that Aduro Clean Technologies is flat year over year. 
excuse me, year to date. Year over year, the company's up about 60%, which is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, I think it uh, it deserves a long-awaited re-rate in the company. And I believe when that happens, it'll be a, a quick acceleration to that re-rate. Uh, currently, information that is being released to the grander uh, the grander investor audience uh, through the website and other social media conduits like myself, um, frustratingly enough, falls on deaf ears. Um, everybody wants to discuss GameStop and AMC as if they're the next coming of Christ and is going to take your retirement into the promised land. Um, this absurdity uh, and downright stupidity uh, in the retail community is really what separates and provides that blanket of uh, reputation to retail investors in not putting value on the right information that is released. Now, it's incumbent upon you. I can tell you that it's the right information. You can either agree or disagree with me. You can read the information for yourself and disagree with the information as put forward. You can consider it as false. Um, you can look to disprove the information, or you can agree with the information altogether. Um, that is your prerogative as an independent investor channel. I'm a little different on my channel in that I require each and every investor to take heed in their own ability to take in the information, which is where my job stops, okay? My job is not to influence you. Um, my job is not to persuade you. Uh, my job is to convey information. And the information that is conveyed to me is then paid forward to you to take a review on, uh, dismiss, act upon, uh, memorialize, uh, and, and filter uh, into your uh, file of Aduro information, which I have already done. And that's it. Um, we're building upon a baseline that has been set for the last 24 months and, and counting. This is a long project. Um, for you guys that don't understand, uh, I am paid by Aduro Clean Technologies as one of many social media outlets that are looking to pay forward this information. Why? Because people need information. What better information would you suggest is applicable to provide the critical information that I'm putting forward through the independent investor channel on Aduro, would you would you uh, be more acceptable if it was on a billboard? The delivery of information, my friends, has changed over the eras and it has changed quickly. And people are coming to the, the terms with um, how information is delivered you have the ability to subscribe to the Independent Investor Channel free of charge. Um, I believe this information is invaluable, um, as I will talk about in my own personal conviction uh, that I will both convey over this uh, this offering um, as well as in the description below. I'll provide all of those disclaimers as far as my relationship with Aduro, um, as well as my share positions, uh, my share buys, and the exact amount of shares that I bought on the day that I bought them. I can't be any more transparent than that. I think there will people be people out there that appreciate that transparency. I know I would, so I can understand where I'm coming from. Um, in 2024, have I drummed up a little bit of questioning of the company? Absolutely. Um, I think retail gets quickly dismissed as to why the game changer gets questioned. I think that's a mistake. It is incumbent upon uh, investors to strike up an intelligent dialogue about where they are in the program. Um, my questioning of the company in a perspective to suggest that, look, the stock has not moved in 2024 is not wrong. Furthermore, I want to bring your attention to the disconnect between perhaps maybe my questioning of progress in certain, certain initiatives and the contrast between my actions, which have put my stock position up above 100,000 shares for the first time ever. So please understand that if you're going to criticize or suggest that maybe I'm not able to question a company that I'm obviously convicted on, then you're not seeking out both sides of the argument. And it is incumbent upon investors I've been doing this a long, long time to look at the what ifs. What does this mean for Aduro? How can we further 
ask the question which was asked. And I'll cover the interview that was put forward by Penny Queen with uh, the chief revenue officer, Mr. Eric Appleman, who I think is just an absolute gem with the company. But to allude to these small things and to ask the question is absolutely prudent. Now, I know the pulse of retail investors is to question the game changer from a surface level and say, hey, what gives? I'm frustrated. I want news and I want it now. I, I get that. But everybody's entitled to their opinion. As shallow as that opinion might be, as in-depth and as critical as someone like I believe mine is to say, hey, look, we've been in this program. We had strategic deadlines to suggest that maybe we would have something at the end of 2023. Retail investors are not idiots, okay? If they can read the track line and understand that maybe that perceived delay in the program is not a bad thing, that by clarity provided by Eric Appleman on the interview, we can understand that that delay can be actually swung to be perceived as a positive in the program, then perhaps maybe we can look at it with a more clarified lens and understand that a Duro just being part of this program and still involved in it is an absolute net positive. I want to kick off with I just released a video on the Independent Investor Channel. You're going to have to kick over and check out um, the press release that was just released this week, May 16th, 2024. We will establish this as a baseline for all things tires, all things tires, in technical terms, cross-linked polymers, okay? The magic that exists within hydrochemolytic technology has been proven over and over and over again, both third-party validated and now has piled on different levels of validation at different purities with uh, simple plastics, 95% efficiency rate. The press release just issue, issued this week. I cover in depth and I invite you to EnduroCleanTech.com, get a handle on that. I will provide those in the links as usual. If you don't want to go to the website, your time is too invaluable, no problem. I'll put it right in front of your face in the comment section and in the description. Click over there because my insistence that information is key in this deliberation is absolutely the truth, okay? If you feel like you're going to wait on a Duro because a Duro is not profitable and the revenue that they're making right now is immaterial, no problem. You are entitled to your application. It is yours, my friend. There's no way that I do social media to strip you of that freedom. I enjoy that freedom. Uh, I look to put focus on that and I look to exploit that freedom that we have as investors to make our own informed decision on whether to do or not to do with regard to your investment decisions and portfolio. It is just that simple, okay? But the announcement suggested that in preliminary trials with a real partner, an industrial uh, facility that provided them the feedstock, they were able to achieve 84% efficiency on a problem that has been historically impossible to solve. I'll wait. It is worth repeating, 84%. These are complex cross-linked polymers that have been historically impossible to to um, to to recycle. They end up in in landfills. You've seen the photos and uh, Penny alluded to some of the tire field fires um, in the interview with Eric Appleman. I thought that was really smart. I don't want to spoil that segment of of this this offering, but I thought that was really smart to bring that to people's attention. Well, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, right, Ryan? It doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. And if you can just put two and two together with me for just a moment. I talk about that addressable market and how that opens up just another vertical for Aduro Clean Technologies. The, the sky's the limit for this company. And it is alluded to in the press release that I'll share with you that there are other discussions going on within in the industry. Why? 
because there are more than one tire producer out there. There are other applications that the hydrochemolytic technology could assist with. And I'm really coming to terms with the fact that Aduro is not looking to blanket solve every problem out there, rather the opposite. They are looking to surgically solve problems for companies out there that come to Aduro and say, here's my problem in the acute, okay? I'm not asking you to solve all my company problems. I'm asking you to focus on the acute and help me solve this one problem or a couple of problems. Can you help us? And the beauty of the hydrochemolytic technology is its ability to fine tune its application to the customer need, which Eric Appleman has alluded to in interviews of past to suggest that that is the absolute business path going forward. Furthermore, to suggest that this customer engagement program has historically worked in the past and is working right now to help actually accelerate this to commercialization. This is a big takeaway from the interview that really stuck out in my mind. But as far as the announcement this week, I invite you over to the Independent Investor Channel. I've just released that on the channel. It will be available to you. It's a quick 10-minute offering. Uh, providing you and linking you up with that critical information. Now let's talk about the interview. The interview is conducted by Penny Queen. Penny Queen is a friend of the Independent Investor Channel, one of my featured channels, and Eric Appleman, the Chief Revenue Officer with the DuroClean Technologies. I thought the interview, I've listened to it twice now, was phenomenal. Eric Appleman is one of my um, favorite people to listen to. He has command over the topic, but he gives historical reference to why this is so important and, and how it links to, to the global problem. However, I will take a moment and acknowledge the host asking very pointed questions, as I knew she would. And I appreciate that technical application, but I want to sit back and I want to give just a little bit of kudos from my perspective. Penny is real. You can sense it in the dialogue. You can sense it in the in the questioning. Yes, she says she's a bullish shareholder from the beginning. Okay. We all know that. I, I concede that to be true. But the dialogue and the tone and the pointed questions only conveyed to me an interviewer okay, that com had command over the interview, but also cared about the topic at hand, cared about the topic at hand. And I thought that was conveyed in a rich manner in the interview. And I thought it was fantastic. I'm going to link um, the connection to that again, information guys. Okay. I'm not going to put on a headband and I'm not going to put a game over shirt on to come and hype this. Aduro doesn't need any hype. They don't need hype. Okay. They have the goods. They don't need me to come on and cheerlead for them. They don't need me to try to influence you. Okay. They have enough shareholders in the company. Half of them are insiders. Half of them are shareholders with the company. Wall Street can't touch this name right now, which makes this even more of a unique opportunity for retail investors, if they have the investing aptitude to do so, to put the dots together and align the stars in a way that would suggest that retail, for once, is provided a first look on this. Now, ironically, if there was panic buying in a duro, which I do foresee at some point in the future because the share float is so tight. We will be hype buying a company that actually deserves to be hype buyed rather than failing businesses uh, at the whims of a social media uh, character that uh, self-designates themselves as the roaring kitty. right? Let's be smart with our application here. All right. I talked a little bit about the stock in 2024. It's flat. It's flat. 
Maduro trades in the microcap, it trades in the quality boards on the OTC markets. And I think eventually the company uh, will, in fact, and is currently vetting and uplisting to, um, to, to more formidable markets. Um, when that happens, I have no idea. Um, I, I know that will inevitably happen. It has to. Um, when you sport the best recycling technology and nobody knows about you, the idea now is that that framework is set and a good baseline is set before transitioning over to those um, higher profile markets because then it's game on, okay? Um, then it's institutions, then it's everybody that is 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 um, uh, wanting to get a piece of this company will absolutely know about it, okay? But we're going to continue to monitor the progress. 2024 is not over. And with these uh, updates on multiple facets here, Aduro is up for uh, a finalist out of six companies uh, for the groundbreaking technology of 2024. Anybody know that? Uh, what if they win? Is that going to get your attention? Is that the type of information that you would consider to be valuable? As I contend, information is valuable. That's for you to decide. Um I've talked about my current position in the company. It's disclosed in the disclaimer below. Um, for you guys on the podcast, you'll have to kick over and, and check the uh, YouTube version of this. But uh, I do want to give a shout out to my podcast audience, man. It's it's good to be back on podcasting. I I love the conduit. It's my favorite medium, actually. But um, you know, for the sake of releasing through YouTube, it's the biggest social media audience that I garner. And quite frankly, I'm trying to bring every single set of eyeballs to this information as I can. But my position currently sets at 105,000. Um, I will continue to grow the position. I have stockpile money set aside. I'm ready to go. Um, I just added 10,000 shares more this week on two separate incremental and strategic buy points. And I've disclosed that openly through social media. How many other people do that? See, I don't care. I don't care what you think about it. And I don't care what anybody thinks about it. My transparency is just about as transparent as I can possibly make it, um, and I insist on doing that. And I think that the people who are in the know actually appreciate my level of of transparency. One hundred and five thousand will continue to build the position. I'm a bullish share owner in the in the company, um, and that's where I stake my claim. Most of those shares are short as a lot of the body of my position based on uh, fundamental releases of information that have been met with no reciprocation in the market have come in 2024, uh, which, you know, in, in essence, it hasn't moved the stock. Therefore, some of the frustration sets in. Well, let, let's get some updates on R3. Let's get some updates on Shell Game Changer. And that we got both through the interview um, as well as putting some of those doubts maybe to rest, I think, on on the interview uh, with Penny and Eric. I thought it was really, really good. For the last few moments of this uh, Aduro content, I, I want to give you my conclusions on what I think is going on right now in the macro um, investing uh, landscape. Um, how it pertains to Aduro Clean Technologies and what that could, could potentially mean for you. First and foremost, I'd like to invite you to all of my social media uh, properties. Uh, follow me uh, on Twitter at Indep Invest. Um, that is the best place for me to, um, I tweet everything over there. So if you're more interested in following me on X, please do so. Um, I'm also on Spotify, the Independent Investor Podcast, is alive and well. It's the greatest secret in social media. Um, not very popular, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm happy with the content. Always looking to deliver on that that baseline, understanding that uh, information is key. The macro space is very, very divided. Um, the micro cap space is even more divided. Um, the small cap market is gaining some momentum now in 2024. The micro cap space is still dismissed. I think the overhang from the high interest rates is providing perhaps a perception of liquidity crunch, not pertaining to a duro. But when you're thrown in with a perception of a group that is perceived to have less access to capital, 
um, than than there was uh, before the global pandemic. Um, things have just shifted in a, in a paradigm way, and and those paradigm shifts they don't they don't happen overnight. They can happen to the positive. They can happen to the negative. And Aduro is just part of a pool of a microcap space that has, for the last three years, been dismissed. And investors want to come out and say, "Don't touch it," or you know, "You shouldn't touch this one, but you should touch that one." All that's futile, because until the markets start to move and there starts to be some new money flowing into the markets, well, the news like the one that was released this week is going to fall on deaf ears. Furthermore. I think larger flows are flowing into companies like NVIDIA, uh, albeit as of late, probably broadening out just a touch into more of the value category. That's my perspective on financial markets now. But <clears throat> everybody really starts to pile into the markets at the mo wrong, wrong time. And just yesterday, we hit an all-time high in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, hit 40,000 for the first time. What does that mean? Does it mean that you are, um, it's your green light to start buying stock? Remember, buy low and sell high. Boy, oh boy, that old onus and that old um, ideology on stock market investing um, sounds cliche, but I tell you what, it's amazing how many people insist on breaking that rule over and over and over and over again. Make no mistake, I've made a killing over the last three years. But the buying that I did to enjoy this appreciation of the market came three years ago, not right now. Uh, I'm trimming positions right now. I'm investing more in companies like Aduro Clean Technologies, who in my assessment is being slept, swept under the rug. They are. The genuine nature of the insights that are provided by Eric Appleman, it, it, as much as he cannot talk about certain things – which is insightful enough if you're actually listening to the interview. The stuff that he does disclose with regard to his relationship of coming onto the Aduro team is, is telling enough. The insider ownership is enough to look at. Look, don't buy the stock because I bought the stock. I'm just giving you an idea of my conviction. You can know where I'm coming from. You can understand that I'm going to give more of a bullish angle on a Duro and try to skirt the criticism, try to skirt those probing questions, which I thought were codified very beautifully on the interview between Penny and Eric. But we will continue to ask those questions and we will continue to challenge the opportunity because I think that opinions and discussions over this company could suggest that while the market might suggest that we have this wrong in the short term. Our discussions and 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 opinions about where we stand with our conviction and why each and every one of those individual applications speak to why we have taken a position in the company or added it to our watch list or dare I suggest don't like the company at all make for a more well-rounded, educated investor. And that, at the end of the day, my friends, is what we're looking to do. Again, I invite you over to X, Twitter, follow me on and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Spotify. Uh, I am also on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, join the private group. Send me over a direct link. I'll get you into the Facebook group. Um, which is uh, 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 3,000 strong members over there. I'm very selective on who I let in the group, but content like this is actually shared with the group in there, and I know they appreciate uh, the efforts if you're interested in the space. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging with me for this review and summary uh, in 2024. It's a mid-review uh, summary for 2024, um, and, and I just wish you all the best and, and, and wish you all the best in your investment future.